Oh. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Baller to Bogey. It is me, Joshua Brown, with you guys again. And it is rivalry weekend, as we all know, Duke versus Carolina. And matter of fact, as you see, I'm wearing my hat, got my heels on. This ain't a facade. This is me every single day. Go heels. <laughs> um, so I have with me a Carolina alum who was a current assistant coach with the Capital City Go-Go. He was drafted by the Milwaukee Bucks in 2006. He played in the NBDL. He played in the PBA. He was the 2006 College Slam Dunk champion. He beat out James White for that trophy. He was the 2009 PBA Slam Dunk champion, 2009 PBA All-Star MVP, and he is a 2005 NCAA national champion. That is David Noel. David, thank you for being here with me. I hope I gave all your accolades. If I forgot something, please chime in. And <laughs> Man, that, that was a lot, bro. I ain't, I ain't even going to lie to you. I ain't realized I did all of that, but uh, yeah. definitely, definitely good to look back on a lot of that stuff. And like you said, you said I beat out James White more so than James White just missed the dunk. <laughs> Hey, I, but, hey, I'm not gonna lie. Day, like he, he had some silly bounce, like man, free throw line with a windmill, and you know yeah, what, buddy, you might have the like hops, it. but you got to put it through the rim. Absolutely, absolutely, and and that's all I did. I made all my dunks, so I ended up walking away with the trophy, man. It was some, it was some great, like great dunkers in that competition, man. Like along with James White, you had guys like. Cameron Bennerman, like from NC State, man, it was it was so Vince, many guys um, in I that dunk Vince contest, Greer. man. Yeah, yeah, Vince Greer, Vince Greer was in it from Minnesota. That's my guy. Uh, he went he went to uh, school here in Durham. That's how we met. Yeah, he went to Mount Zion, didn't he? Yep. No, he went to Bonner, Bonner Academy. Bonner. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. I remember that. So, so the small connection that I'll give you guys, as some of you know, um, growing up, I played on the AAU circuit with the, the North Carolina Gators. And when I was just entering into the high school ranks um, in 2002, the coach Vic Sapp um, was the mastermind and put together one of the most ridiculous rosters that I must say it had Carmelo Anthony, Raymond Felton, UNC, Justin Gray, Richard McCants, Strength Trick, Trent Strickland from Wake Forest, Richard, mm -hmm. Eric Williams from Wake Forest, um, Shawan Robinson, Clemson, David Noel. Uh, let me see. PJ Tucker was on that group. It was a monster uh, squad. Um, who, who am I missing? It, but that's that's, that's it, man. Think of it like, that team was loaded. Yeah, if you think of the Looney Tunes Monsters, it was basically that was the North Carolina Gators um, 19 under team. And that, oh, let me, how do I forget? Rashad McCants was also a part of that team as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. What was it like just playing on such a star-studded team? I know it was AAU basketball and you guys only played a couple of tournaments together, but just to know that hey, I'm not in a starting five, but somebody else that's playing in the ACC or the Big Ten or the Big 12 is coming off the bench. Like, what, what was that like? Just It was crazy, man. Uh, like you said, I only played a couple tournaments with the Gators. Um, and But lastly, but and most importantly, the, the championship tournament where we won it all. Uh, but it, the crazy part about it is, like, I didn't realize how playing with great players like that would bring out the best in you, but then also like how unselfish everybody was. Like it was good basketball out there when we played uh, in, in in the in the AAU championship, man. We had, and again, guys like Rashad doing his thing, guys like Ray doing his thing, Shawan doing his thing, me doing my thing. And like every name that you named were absolutely the best of the best in high school in North Carolina. And uh, the, they went out there every single game and, and it was just a, a star studded show, man. And, and I was just happy to be a part of it. Yeah, I know I have to, I have to get it out there and put the props because I know he would get on me after this. Steve Rush, who played at mm. North Carolina a and was a part of it. And so yeah. KJ, uh, who played at UNC Asheville, was both a part of that team. So rolling into knowing that tomorrow is the first Tobacco Road battle between uh, 
those those guys in Durham. Them bums, them bums. Those you call them, them bums. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say is your best Duke UNC moment, not only as a player, but also as a fan and just a supporter of the game? Um, it, that, it, it would be tough. It would be tough doing it from a fan perspective uh, because, you know, unfortunately, I was a Duke fan, you know, back in the day before I went to North Carolina. Yeah, I know. I Don't shook my head that public. Yeah, too, man. <laughs> it, I mean, it's public. And, you know, you, we got to learn from our past, our mistakes, man. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm, I'm proud to say that I learned from my mistakes. So, uh, but as a, as a player, it was by far 2006 going into Cameron Indoor Stadium, knocking them off on their senior night. Um, and they and they had a great team, man. JJ was on a historic run, and we were a team that were that was hungry. We were we were young. We were we were kind of building the foundation of of what was to come all the way through that Tyler Hansbro uh, that freshman class their their run that they had uh, because we were, again we were rebuilding from the 2005 uh, national championship that kind of deal. So for us to be able to go into Cameron with that team, star studded as they was, uh, and, and go in and, and, and knock them off, it was probably one of the best experiences of my entire college career. So you were the lone returning um, player from the group. So UNC had won that national championship. And so no, I wasn't a lone returning player. We had, we had me, we had Byron Sanders, who was a senior with me. Okay. And then we had Rayshon Terry. We had Quentin Thomas. Um, and we had a few walk-ons as well. But uh, like that, that team, we, 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 were, we were definitely freshman loaded. Uh, but at the same time, like the experience that we brought back, we had guys who were ready to kind of break out of that shell and it be their time to shine kind of deal. So, and, and the guys that were, that were in those roles, they stepped up and filled them pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Definitely got that part. Um, so what's your, what's your take for the game tomorrow night? You think we're going to be, we're going to smack them bombs. It's, it's that simple. It's that simple. We ain't playing no games <laughs> with these bombs, man. And, 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 and I know it's COVID. Ain't nobody going to be in the gym. It ain't going to be the Cameron that's supposed to be the Cameron, but it don't matter. It don't matter. We coming at their head like we always do, and that's what it's going to be tomorrow. I know everybody ain't as hyped for the game like, like you're supposed to be, and, but it don't matter. We are going to smack these bums, and I can't wait because I'm going to talk junk because everybody got to be on social media now. They can't be. They can't hide, so I'm going to talk some cash junk today and tomorrow, and I can't wait. I hope we win. I just <laughs> I hope we win too. I do. I do. I hope we win. And you were given a couple of nuggets on some other podcasts about you know the leadership and what you felt were some keys to this year's team of having more success. Do you do you still stand by that, or do you think there needs to be some additional adjustments that are made, you know, for this team to finish out the season um, living up to its its potential? Yeah, this, there are, I think there are a few cracks in what, what North Carolina is doing. And, and it's only specifically for this team. Again, I think Garrison has to step up a little bit more as far as uh, living up to the expectation and the hype. Um, and, and not, not from, but, but that, the cra that's the crazy part. I'm not even necessarily talking about from the ACC player of the year standpoint. It's more so of the leading by example standpoint. And, and, I, and I feel like, and, and don't get me wrong, I think he is doing that, um, but I think it has to be pushed a little bit further than, than, than what, what's been going on um, as far as their play lately. Um, I do think there are, so again, that, that addresses the leadership part. And it doesn't just have to be Garrison. You got Leakey, who's an who's a upperclassman. You got Baycock, who's only a sophomore, but he's been around, you know what I'm saying? So he, he's a tough guy that can also kind of push us along like the last game. Right. Absolutely. And so when you, when you talk about, when you talk about this current North Carolina team, they have all of the pieces uh, to be very successful, to live up to the, to the standard of not only North Carolina basketball, but the hype that they came in with this season. Everybody thought North Carolina, uh, this team was going to be like, 
oh yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be one of the top in the ACC, which we which we are, and in a down year in the ACC. But I do think this team has a lot more potential. And uh, I thought we would kind of hit our stride, and then we go to Clemson and lay an absolute egg, which you know bothers me a little bit as a fan, as a former player, uh, kind of understanding the game, and also from a coach's perspective. You want your guys to be bought in to a certain point, and 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 fortunately for North Carolina, they hadn't had necessarily many pauses as far as COVID is concerned. They haven't had any positive tests, so they've been able to kind of continue to get at this thing, and and that's probably the best thing that could happen for them uh, to kind of continue to work out of work through these ruts that they've been kind of going through, and, and hopefully that translates into a great game on Saturday tomorrow against them bums, and then we can kind of take off from there. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, <laughs> Transitioning to um, from basketball to the other sport that we both also love dearly, um, the game of golf. And mm -hmm. don't know if it's a, a big thing that folks know, but you love golf and it's something that you've taken up. So when did you start playing golf? So I think I, I honestly want to say I started playing golf about – 2010 maybe and then I started taking it serious about 2013-14 um it was one of my I started taking it serious at 2000 in 2014 so I went and got some real clubs got got fitted all that kind of stuff um and then there from 2014 to now I probably had a two-year gap where I didn't play at all so I can say I've really been playing consistently for probably the last three years. And so once I, once I started to play it consistently, I fell in love with it. It's, we have like a love hate relationship. I'll, I'll put it that way because just as soon as I think I figured it out, I got my clubs where I wanted them to, where I wanted them to be. I got my putter where I wanted to be. I got my driver where I wanted to be something happens something's off you know what i'm saying so but that's the game of golf and that's and that's yeah. kind of why i love it so much because it's not necessarily uh you, you're not not necessarily competing against other people you're really competing against yourself and then hopefully yourself is better than the other people more more times than not the four the group of four that you're with so uh but yeah definitely love the game of golf so was there anybody in particular that you would um basically give kudos to that introduced you to it or you just happened to have always kind of had an interest in it? No, I would, I would give, I would probably give kudos to Sean May, uh, my, my teammate at North Carolina. Uh, he, he was out doing it one day and I, I don't know, I think I, I think I wanted to go and then we ended up going and all I could do at that particular time was drive the ball. Everything else was a mess. Um, which is and crazy. So, because the driver is usually that's the hardest club for, for people. right. So I could drive the ball good. Everything else was an absolute mess. But then, as I can continue to concentrate on like my mid game, my putting, that's when my driver went way left. <laughs> so, so it was so it was one of those type deals to where um, when Sean introduced me to the game, we I went out a couple times with them, um, hit a few played a couple 18s, played a couple nines, kind of started to like it a little bit. But back, back then, again, I had like a, a, a starter set of clubs. I think I had like some, some uh, top flights or something like that that I had just bought from Dick Sporting Goods or something just to get out there. So I had my own clubs kind of deal. Um, and then Sean was like, hey, man, if you're going to take this serious, you probably need to get some clubs. You probably need to go. You know, and then I found out how much them clubs cost. I was like, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> so, but eventually I bit the bullet because again, I, I felt like it was an investment and, uh, and, and I've, I've continued to do so since, uh, I just actually bought some clubs this summer or last summer. Um, and so I'm, I'm hitting those pretty good. So I'll, I'll see how, uh, we'll see you know, what's, what's, in bit. what's in the bag. I got, I got, I got the ping four tens, man. I, the crazy part about it, I wanted to ping oh, that's the old. That's not the all black, is it? No, 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 no. That's these the seventeen. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, those are the these are gray, black, and red. Um, 
So I, I got those. I wanted the 400s uh, because I had heard great things about the 400s. But when I went to go get them, they had just discontinued. I was like a week late and they had just discontinued selling them. So uh, the Golf Pro, you know, suggested the 410s. I was also looking at the Cobras uh, at that particular time. And and for, for whatever reason, I went with the 410s and I mean, it, it was a great investment. It definitely, uh, it definitely helped my game out a little bit, having the right equipment. Yeah. So I'll say for myself, I ended up going with the Cleveland launcher in the UHX set, the UHX um, set because they're super game improvement. But after just kind of like always reflecting, breaking down my game, you had just mentioned Cobra. I actually mm-hmm. considered like, Bryson DeChambeau is going crazy with it. Why not do the single length club? It's like, hey, if I get that club playing and I just stay in that same position, then, you know, the different club head and with the, the shaft weight, that takes care of the rest, you know, with the mm-hmm. pitching wedge or sand wedge. So I've actually considered, like, if I do get another set, I might just go to that single length iron set myself. And th- I, th- I thought about the same thing, man, and I did I did a lot of research on it, and it talked about, you know, how it could take, you know, away from some clubs and how it could add to other clubs. But so I, I don't I did not do the single uh, length on, on, on my clubs this particular time. But I would say if I did do that, I think I would do everything. I think I would do everything in my seven iron because my seven iron is the one that I hit fluid every single time. Like no matter what, it, that's, that's my club that I try to get to on the course. Like if, if I'm and my seven iron, my seven iron is probably one, 170, 170. So I, I don't, sometimes I don't even tee off with my, with my driver. Like I'll hit it trying to get it to like 170. And yeah. then I'll hit my seven because I know it's going straight and then I'll go from there. But um, that that's, 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 but I, I would definitely do everything with my seven nine, but I did not do that this time with my clubs. Man, I definitely like that mindset of saying, you know, you're willing to tee off with your seven nine and not thinking like everybody else in your, your group pulls out the big stick on the mm-hmm. tee box and they're trying to go ahead and get it 220 to 270 on down there. And you're like, yeah, I know my strength. Let me go on and get this a guaranteed 170 yards out there. If it's dry and it's downhill, might roll a little bit more. Yep. Then I can still take the same club and I can hit it again. And I know I'm at least, you know, on a par four, putting myself close to the green with that second shot or on the green. Absolutely. You know, I'll definitely say that there's there's definitely like that ego sense that comes along. Yeah. Like everybody get to the tee box, everybody pull out the driver and if the driver is not your go-to, you know, like you said, it's going to slice left right into the to the woods. Then why put yourself in that position? I guess just to, you know, like oh well, it's my driver. Everybody else got to get my driver. So like, nah, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to birdie this hole. So let me go absolutely first for me. So absolutely, that's the like that's the that's the crazy thing about golf, man. Like. So I give my driver two holes. I, I give it three holes because I, I don't necessarily count the first hole um, because you get two off of the box. Uh, I take two off of the box anyway. <laughs> uh, so I take two off of the first box. And then, you know, at, if, if that second and third hole is still with me, then I'll, I'll continue to kind of try to use it. But if I don't hit it good, that second and third shot, uh, I, I go ahead and, and put it back go in the, the bag. Yeah, go back in the bag, put a little cover on it, and then <laughs> here come here come my five or my seven iron, and then we we go from there. So it's it's definitely an ego thing. Um, you definitely want to drive it far, you want to bomb it, all that kind of stuff. But for me, it got to a point to where like I really wanted to see my number decrease on the card. And so as I continue to uh play and feel like I was getting better. Like I started trying to play smarter and that was the, that was the biggest thing for me. Okay. True. So you had mentioned, you definitely pointed out that your clubs are red and gray, had that, that color scheme to it. And folks might not know it. I don't know if you mind sharing, but you do have a little bit of Greek affiliation. Mm -hmm. Sharing what that Greek affiliation is. I am a proud member of the prestigious Kalpa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. 
Um, <laughs> and yeah, I'm a noob, man. And it's, it, it ran in my family. Uh, my brother, my brother's, uh, my brother-in-law, uh, he was a noob. He, he crossed the A&T, um, AK in 93. Nope. I'm lying. 98. Excuse me. It was 98. Um, and so once we, no, I'm lying. It was 94. I'm sorry. It was 94. Um, and then just watching him, uh, I had a couple homeboys who did it. Uh, and then, you know, one, me, me and one of my best friends who I call my, my brother, uh, me and him had always talked about pledging Kappa and, you know, I went on and I, I did it. Unfortunately, uh, he was at Howard and they, they had started a line, but then they got kicked off of the yard. So he didn't get a chance to, to pledge, but it was, uh, it was something that we both wanted to do and, and I had an opportunity and I took full advantage of it. Okay. So just from being around the game for the short amount of time that I have, I've come to just two things that are common to me that are pointed out within the black community is that one, there's a high popularity amongst black Greek men that play mm -hmm. Then two, there's also a high popularity amongst black male athletes that you know play either basketball or football, something along those lines that are that also play golf. Um, do you all participate in like tournaments or have travel, you know, groups play destination sites, do any of that stuff? Man, every every Sunday we I got a group of guys that we play skins with, uh, oh, group of older guys actually. Uh, and we get out and we'll we'll travel pretty much all over North Carolina uh, to, to, to play uh, and depending on. So we'll each guy kind of pick a course each week. Uh, and then sometimes sometimes I'll try and get out twice a week. I'll try and get to the range once and then get out and play uh, twice a week. And, and sometimes that's like a Wednesday, Sunday, or maybe it'll it'll happen to be that Saturday, Sunday kind of depending on my schedule and, and what, what my, my wife and kids are doing. That, that's really the most important part. <laughs> like, as long as wife is cool with me being gone for five hours, then, you know, I, I can get out there. But it's, uh, it's definitely, uh, for me, it's, it, it, was a, it, was, it was a way to kind of network and build uh, because you're out there for so long, you get a chance to have good conversations, you get, to, get a chance to talk um, and just kind of be with people that, you know, kind of had the same interests and that kind of deal. So um, that's that's another re reason why I picked it up. Okay. So going back to your um, your Durham roots and Southern High School roots. So the question: Which one do you like better? Do you like Falls Village Golf Course better, or do you like the Crossings? I like I like the Crossings better. Um, Falls Village is good. Crazy part about it is I shot my best score on Falls Village. I ain't gonna tell you what it was because I don't want you to be like, oh man, that ain't nothing. But nothing, nothing, it was something for me. But I shot I my never broke. I never broke 90. So anything that you- Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> I've never broke 90. <laughs> man, hey, listen, that was, that was the, that was one of the things that I was like determined to do this, this, this year. And so I shot an 82 at, uh, at Falls Village and, and then dope. and before then before then the crazy part about it is the crossings was my best I had shot a 93 so I was consistently in the 90s and then finally broke the 80s I shot a I went to Greensboro at uh, um oh, Grandover Grandover East I shot a I shot a 80 87 it might have been an 88 that's big might have been an 88 88 that's a nice course yeah, it is. It is. We love, we love Grando. We get out there probably at least twice a month. Easy. Um, join the Griffin club so we can kind of get that little discount, but, uh, like but it's, yeah, yep. 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 It ain't bad at all, especially for that nice of a course. So, um, so yeah, but I shot a, I shot a 80, 88 on the East and then I shot a 87 on the West. So okay. yeah, finally broke the eighties, but, but again, Falls village was real good to me. My driver, that's what it was. My driver was on that day, and I, I, I ended up shooting the 82, man, so was definitely excited about it. Okay, that sounds good. So what is your success? Um, I'm trying to think of the hole now. So in the cross, on the back nine, you have the par four that you can see from 
Highway 98, then you have the Par 5 downhill, and then you have the Par mm-hmm. Island Green. Which yeah. That's on that island green. You usually splash, or are you on the are you on the dance floor most of the time? So that island green is tough because so most of the time I'm on the green because I play it long. Okay. So I always try to play it long just simply because I don't want to go in the water. <laughs> so I'd yeah. rather get up there and two put versus hit it in the water, drop, you know, that kind of deal. So uh, and, and plus, I, I, but I don't, I don't, I play it. So normally when, when we go, every time we've went, the, the hole has been at the front of the green. And so I always play to the middle of the green and then try to get it to spin back. My joint don't ever spin back though. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. I think out of all the years that I've been playing crossings, I think that I've actually been alive twice. And I want to say, Yee. of course, multiple multiple times and it's it's just something about you know the psychology of it it's like Mm -hmm. if i if i club up then you know it's like you're going to take it too far it's like Mm -hmm. club down it's like the wind catches it's going to go short you're going to the water and yeah there's only been and the, the flag was actually closer to to the front right towards where the little um grass area that you can walk yep Mm -hmm. I have to say every single time I end up splashing in the water besides twice. But I've also, I will say, I've had some of my my best rounds there because as you're also taking that back nine, and I'll tell anybody, like, the crossings back nine is probably one of the best in the triangle. I know that we have Duke's Golf Course, um, which is also open to the public. I can't tell you anything about any of Trey Burn and none of those places, but I'll tell you, for public golf, that back nine um, at the crossing is probably amongst the, the best in in the Raleigh-Durham area. And yeah. just I was saying, so you finish with that par three, then you go to another par four, then you mm-hmm. go to the par four where you have to go over the, yep. and then get it on. But then you're followed by a 200-yard par three. Yeah, man. Water running along the way. And yes, it was one of those times, just like you said, I was just playing out of my mind. I think it was measuring it just over 200 yards and I had a three wood and I slapped it up there and I had a chance for birdie. And literally when I saw where it landed, I was like, man, that, that must be a piece of cotton or lint that's like sitting over there on the green. I was like, nah, that's my ball. So yeah. Mm. That. Um, yeah. That, that part three gets me every single time. I haven't made the green. I haven't made the green on that part three yet. And I've been playing that joint for a minute too, man. And that that part three easily eats me up. I don't care how well I'm playing. I don't care if and, and the crazy part about it is normally I hit that with my I think it I think it measures right at about 200. My five iron is another is another club that I hit straight and it and I'm talking about dead center every single time. And it's going about 195 once it hits. So it's the perfect club for that hole. I have not made the green once. So I haven't made it once. You still, so even if you, I will say with that one, if you can keep it, you know, straight or keep it straight, but even short, you still have a chance of, yeah. a, you know, a, a pitch onto the green with a, a hope of, you know, just one putt in there. But yeah, I, I definitely, because that little side heel, you know, somebody's yeah. <laughs> there plenty of times that I've done kick the ball there and, it's been it's been a wash one as well. So yeah. About you know these different courses, and you said that you and your your guys y'all travel. What would you say is the most difficult golf course that you ever played? Uh, it, it definitely has to be Tobacco Road. We we took that trip down and played Tobacco Road. As beautiful as it is, that thing is so hilly, man. And you just like so that was probably and the crazy part about it is I didn't play bad there, but. It was just every shot you had to kind of be on point. Mm-hmm. And so and so when 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 we played it, I wasn't I was I was also at the beginning stages as well. So I wasn't necessarily as confident in my game um, as I probably as I as I am now for sure. So I'll definitely want to go back and play it. But 
Um, and, and the crazy part about it is my group went and played it probably I was, right before it got got too cold. So I would probably say right around in them December months when we had that good weather. Um, but I, I had something to do, so I wasn't able to go. But Tobacco Road was definitely probably one of the toughest toughest to play for me. Yeah, so I'll definitely, you know, with Tobacco Road being a, a Mike Strands course, and I still haven't had the, the chance to tee it up, but I've watched plenty of videos and people that mm-hmm. join the group and share. They say visually it's intimidating. Mm-hmm. Be, um, I think on the first tee, there's these two hills. And yep. <laughs> like, man, I got to get my ball through, you know, that 20 yard gap. But then once you get over to the other side, they're like, dude, this wide open like a football field. Wide open. Yep. But yep. mentally, but mentally or visually, you see just that little gap in. They said a lot of it is intimidating to you. So with, you know, thinking of a course like that, thinking of, you know, playing the crossings. And you said like you played Fall Village numerous times, numerous times. And then, you know, even with the game of basketball, psychologically, do you ever feel like you are psyching yourself out when you go to a golf course that you've played? Oh, no question. No question. Like that, that, that's, that's probably one of the biggest things that I think golf is. Golf is very mental. Like you can go from, if you're if you're in a bad mood or whatever the case may be, it's gonna show out on the golf course. Like you're gonna get frustrated. You'll 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 start to hit shots that you know you shouldn't hit. You'll start to do things that you know you shouldn't do. You'll try things that, um, and so, is the, the golf is probably more mental than basketball is, simply because, and, and I and I think as athletes sometimes we can use our athleticism to overcome a lot of the things that we deal with on a basketball court, where if you try that on the golf course, that'll hurt you. So for real, for real, I think a lot of people, uh, I know this was one of the tips that uh, a golf pro gave me. And he was like, I know you're an athlete, but sometimes you have to diminish who you are as an athlete in order to play the game of golf. And, and that's been one of the biggest things that I've tried to do because there are some times where I try to go out there and I swing as hard as I can because I'm big, I'm strong, I'm fast kind of deal. And I get out there and I smack the ball and it's going left, it's going right, it's going all over the place. And then when I just take my time and do my, my, my pretty much my practice swing like you're supposed to and get that good tempo, and now I hit it straight down the middle of the fairway and it goes the same amount of yardage that it was supposed to go anyway without me having to be that you know big strong athlete so to speak so um i think that's the that's the biggest thing the mental part of golf is is very important yeah and definitely just you know sitting there thinking back and just realizing that like you said you know six foot six and in your playing days two two thirty two is what you have right I hope you're still rocking that now nah six <laughs> or five um not even it, close yeah it, it does with golf it does not matter that you know I'm six foot five two I ain't gonna tell you on my weight right now what <laughs> but however much but then a guy like um Patrick Reed who mm-hmm. you know, when you look at him you're like that's why I'm going up against you. Like, you got a gut. He looked like he kind of slow. Like, golf is an equalizer when it comes right. to type of athleticism. And that's that's been one of the, the biggest eye-openers, I'll say, for myself. But definitely, as I've become to, to learn to game, learn the game of, or, you know, just like you said, with that speed tempo, because I find myself now, honestly, I watch golf more than I watch basketball. And then I'm sitting there looking, I'm like, he doesn't even look like he swung that. <laughs> and he just put that ball 230 yards, like with a with a six iron or a five iron, something like mm-hmm. that. Just trying to understand stand that dynamics. Um, you know, it's crazy. Like I watch it and and so this is what I tell, like, cause me and my homeboys will watch golf too. And be like, yo, you see him hit that shot. So that I feel like the difference. And, and so, like, we'll see guys on a professional level do some of the things that we do on a golf course, like hit a ball in the woods or slice it left or slice, or, or, or excuse me, hook it left or slice it right kind of deal. Like, and so what I what I tell my guy, I was like, bro, you know what the difference is between us and them? 
is they have the recovery shot in their bag. Like where, where, where we don't most of the times. So if I hit it in the woods and they ain't got no clear shot, I don't know how to hook it around a tree and get it back in the fairway, that kind of deal. I got to kind of punch mine and now I lost two strokes. <laughs> so I think that's the biggest difference from professionals to amateurs or, or, or you know, your, 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 your uh, hobbyists, uh, so to speak, because we don't have every single shot in our bag. It, when we do make bad shots, we get in trouble trying to recover from the bad shot that we made versus them they can they can make good shots out of the bad shots that they've already that they you know made a mistake and hit kind of deal absolutely absolutely and speaking of in your bag i'm going to pull this up real quick and i want you to tell us a little bit about this memory that is in your bag don't know if you can hey hey just just go ahead and tell us a little bit about this memory lane so we were at mill creek on the 12th hole, it was a par three. Um, I pulled the, I pulled my eight iron, pulled my eight iron out my bag. It was, it was like one, I think the hole was 168 uh, is, is what it was, what it was counting. And when I say I teed it up, kind of looked at it. And so when I hit it, I got great contact. I'm talking about the thing, I, like the swing was smooth. That thing took off straight as heck, right at the, and I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh yeah, that's a good shot. That's a good shot. I, you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's going, you know, maybe hit close to the hole. Man, that thing kept going, kept going, kept going. Wow. Fell right in the hole, off the fly. I was like, oh. So, so it wasn't even a, a bounce in. It wasn't even a bounce in. It was, it was like a it slam was dunk. Straight, it was like a slam dunk straight in the hole off the fly, man. And, and like the my group that I was with, I was with uh I was with my uh one of my friends from from Durham, his name Daryl Hinton. Um his his wife is a dentist. Uh she has her her group, Hinton group, uh dentistry. And then uh his dad. So, and the crazy part about it is all their names is Daryl, Daryl Hinton. <laughs> so it was Daryl Hinton Sr., Daryl Hinton Jr., and, and their son, who is like an amateur golfer, he's really, really good. Uh, so, and Daryl Hinton the third. And so it was us as a group of four, and everybody just went nuts. I was like, oh, I said, I was like, wait a minute. So, like, I was like, bro, this ain't real. So as we driving up, that thing sitting right in the cup, man. So, like, I was... So, and then of course, all my homeboys, I started calling them like, <laughs> like, yo, I just hit a hole in one. I just hit a hole in one. Joe was like, man, stop lying, stop lying. And so I, I took the picture, put the video with it um, uh, behind it, just so, you know, that the, 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 uh, the Hintons could kind of tell everybody what happened. And, uh, but it was, it was, a, it was a heck of a feeling, man. Lucky, lucky shot. I mean, it was a good shot, lucky at the same time, but it just kind of, goes to show you how how golf can can be sometimes man and it was it was it was a good feel i've been trying to crazy part about it, we went back and i tried to do it again i ain't been close since that's that's the crazy <laughs> part so what would you say was a better feeling that hole in one or you punching on casey sanders in the duke unc rivalry oh me put me punching on casey no no question no question about that one and everybody i've been telling everybody they've been sleeping on that dunk man i get it, it was, you know our freshman year we lost um but I, I i balled out that game like that was kind of my coming out party coming back to the crib playing at cameron indoor stadium for the first time as a freshman for the university of north carolina and all i wanted to do was show out and and i did and 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 that dunk I told him, I said, man, y'all got to start running that dunk in some of these North Carolina Duke packages because that's up there, you know what I'm saying, in my opinion, <laughs> with your Jerry Stackhouse, you know, reverse dunk, with your Danny Green tea bag dunk. I know I'm third, but that don't matter. It's, I know I'm third, but I'm still, y'all got to run that in some of the package. My name ain't as big as they So, so, how, so. How, would you, how would you really put that up against the inbounds play themed on Vince Carter over the top? Oh, yeah, that's that. That's just that, that, that was kind of me. stands alone. Man, that's tough. That kind of stands alone for for because Vince is you know, you know, we talk about the guys who because Vince is in his own category. He like tier one, him, MJ, Dominique. 
you know, they on that tier. And then everybody else kind of fall under them. I say I'm more like a tier three guy. You know what I'm saying? When it came to the bounce and hops and all that kind of stuff, I was probably a tier three guy. But that dunk, I still, it still needs to be in the package. <laughs> true, that is true. All right. So, David, man, I appreciate you taking the time to, you know, sit down and talk with us a little bit about UNC basketball, knowing that they're going to knock off Duke tomorrow. And Absolutely. The game of golf. Um, Really do appreciate you having on and, you know, again, most success to you in the, the Capital City Go-Go. Appreciate it. G League and congratulations on the, the step up from Southern Durham to, to the G League. So congratulations for that. Definitely appreciate it, brother. Thank you so much. All right. And everybody, you guys tune in for the next time that we have another guest. And again, keep practicing. I know it's cold, but you know what? Do what you got to do to get your game right because I'm working on it day in and day out. <laughs> I'll take care.